Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Welcome to Shabbat Service for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. We welcome everyone who is with us today and for those who are listening in later on the archives. We pray that this is a blessing to each and every one of you. It is Saturday, April 30th, 2022 in the Gregorian calendar, the very last day of April already. Um, hard to believe. Um, and on the Hebrew calendar, 5782 is the year. It is Nisan 29. And we are counting the days, which is known as counting the Omer, uh, leading to Shavuot or Pentecost. And it is Omer 14. And this is the day that the Lord has made. We will be glad and rejoice in it. We've got quite a bunch of things going on this week, actually. We um, are going to be bringing in a new Hebrew calendar month, and that is Rosh Kadesh IR, that's spelled I-Y-A-R, and we'll be doing that tomorrow. And as we do that, we also do Holy Communion um, every month when we bring in a new Hebrew calendar month. And also next Saturday, May 7th, we will also uh, be doing Holy Communion because it is the first Shabbat, the first Saturday of the month. Um, and we usually do Holy Communion. Th those are two steady uh <laughs> opportunities for for taking communion for coming to the the table of the lord so that will be happening um we are continuing our bible study and we're using the english standard version right now um in this in this round through the bible through the bible study we had just completed um the tlv we had gone through the tlv which is the messianic jewish family bible tree of life version we had been reading that for about two years, and we just had completed it uh, in December. So we started it at another version um, in January with our Bible study, and we selected the English Standard Version this time around. So we'll be doing that from cover to cover as we did with the TLV. Um, the other opportunities that are coming up this week, the other events that are coming up, I should say, um, to pay attention to is it, it, it is Israel Memorial Day, and that is to remember the fallen uh, from the IDF, um, and also in in Israel's Independence Day is on May fifth. The Memorial Day is on the fourth, and then then here in the United States we have National Day of Prayer also on May fifth, and I encourage everyone to pray for our nation and pray for the world too. Um, it is in such a disarray. Uh, we need to all be praying um, to the Lord for sure. So that's what's coming up this coming week. Um, and also, we have moved up our Tuesday. We meet live in real time um, on freeconferencecall.com every Tuesday. You're welcome to come. Uh, you can actually talk with us in person. Um, and we'd love to have you. We have really good, healthy discussions um, about um, some of the things going on in our world and how, to, how it relates biblically. We pray one for another. We lift one another up. That is what fellowship is all about. We talk about the biblical things as well. If there's questions that come that arise as people are reading through their Bibles. We 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 just have discussions on that as well. We have used this channel also for teaching. I did a seven week series on the churches of Revelation. We are going to go back to doing some teaching as well. Um, I'm actually um, we're going to be reviewing a book. Um, this is a primer for um, spiritual warfare. It's a really good book to, to as an introduction into spiritual warfare. It gives a whole background of what really happened, how mankind fell from the grace of God, um, how mankind lost dominion, and how 
Yeshua reversed the curse and gave us dominion and authority back. But uh, somehow not all of the members of the church across this planet seem to understand that we can put the devil under our feet. We do not need to. Yeshua gave us that authority when he gave his life. He died for that very, for, for our sins and also um, to defeat the evil one. And that was prophesied in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. And in the TLV, it reads, I will put animosity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. He will crush your head and you will crush his heel. And the he that uh, was being referred to was a prophetic word uh, that about Yeshua coming and defeating our enemy, the enemy to our soul. So we are going to actually um, get into um, more deeper spiritual warfare. That's what we had started to do. Um, and we're going to get back to doing that. So we're going to be reviewing um, Destined to Overcome. It is a book. Um, all you need to do is bring your Bible because we spend a lot of time uh, reading from the Bible and then discussing what we've read. There's another shout out um, for those of you that have other types of ministries, such as music ministries, uh, writing ministries. If you would like us to host you uh, on a Tuesday evening, we'd love to do that. You just need to reach out to me uh, and let me know what when when it works for you. I do have the ability to do an MP3 and an MP4 recording from this platform. So, and I've done it before, we've had a praise and worship uh, leader and a writer on. Um, and then what I did is recorded it and then send it in an email to, to those individuals. So uh, just let me know um, and I'd be glad to accommodate. Uh, we're all working towards the kingdom of heaven. So if we can help one another, um, this is our ministry's way of tithing into yours. And with that being said, that's pretty much um, the announcements. And uh, when you join us um, Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. instead of 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can join by phone or by website. There is a drop down menu for both. Um, I will post them on the social media platforms. And I do post on MeWe. I post on USA.life. I post on Facebook and Gap. So um, there are four different social media platforms that it is posted to. Um, and the phone list is free, even though it says it's not. Uh, it even says the USA number is toll, but it is nobody's ever paid for anything. So um, it is free. That's the list they give us. So you would dial the in-country number and then you would wait for the prompt and then dial the access code. The access code is the same for everyone. So it's, it's just your, your, your in-country number is different uh, depending on where you're calling from. And India sounds like they're right next door. We've had someone in from India before and it sounds crystal clear. It was great. Um, so the other way that you can join, if that doesn't work, you can try joining by website. You can download the app uh, either by phone or by your computer web uh, and then run the exec, follow the prompts in. They're pretty self-explanatory and you'll come into the conference area and you'll see there's a built-in microphone that you can talk directly through. You can mute it, you can unmute it. Um, and also there is a chat area as well. And for those that want to be hosted, there's even a camera. So, um, so it's all well equipped. It's, it's a really safe platform and probably one of the best platforms that have been around. Um, and it's, it's the one, the one that I prefer. So anyway, we'd love to have you. We can, we can hold about a thousand people. So we're going to be doing some teachings. I haven't decided as when we get into the teachings, if, if I'm going to do the recording. So um, not sure if I'm going to do that or not. Um, so come join us and, and part, you know, be part of, be part of the, the, the teaching because everybody could use this. I think every believer needs to know how to defend themselves in the spirit, um, and how to stand up against the evil one that is going to constantly throw darts at you. 
and we have protection we have weapons of warfare and it's in the and our weapons of warfare are spiritual amen amen well, we're going to open up this segment of shabbat father god we thank you so much for this day that you have set aside for us this day of rest shabbat for you sanctified this day you actually showed us that example and you're a good father you showed us right from the beginning from example you worked six days and you rested on the seventh and that you when you gave those commandments that is exactly what you want us to do as well so we are here to honor you father god we love you we worship you we adore you and we ask your holy spirit to come guide us lead us direct us show us the things that you want us to to grasp so that we can incorporate them in our in our lives and our walk with you and we love you so much father god in the mighty name of yeshua hamashiach jesus christ amen and amen and in the ancient days the high priest sounded the shofar to gather benaya israel for worship and we're going to sound the shofar now I'm going to pause it now for you to go ahead and listen to some praise and worship songs. As I said in the first segment, I can't upload this any songs on this recording uh, for uh, just to avoid any possibility of copyright infringements. However, um, if you are linking on from the four social media platforms that I mentioned, I do post songs. I post songs before I post um before I post part one and part two of Shabbat service, um, that is this recording. So there'll be a set of songs before part one and a set of songs after part two. So of course this, you know, you can uh, listen to them and it will take you directly um, to the artist's YouTube channel. So you can promote those artists as well. I mean, these are, these are wonderful, wonderfully anointed songs. So what I would encourage you to check into the artists um, and, you know, promote them, you know, so they also probably have, most of them have websites um, or other ways that you can order their music. So definitely, definitely um, share their music and support them. So I'm going to pause it now for you to listen to some praise and worship songs. Um, if you have your own, that's fine. Um, praise and worship. Uh, we do not delete praise and worship. Absolutely. We do praise and worship too. Um, the thing is, it's because of the copyright issues. Praise and worship is, it has to be part of every service. We are designed to praise and worship our creator. That's what we're designed to do. Every, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. That means everything in creation praises God Almighty. So absolutely, it is, it is one of the most important elements of any service, whether it be a Shabbat service or a Sunday Christian service. Praise and worship is the most important. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to pause it now for you to, to go do some praise and worship. And then we're going to come back and read from the Brit Kadashah and do an altar call and close out this week's Shabbat service. Well, we've got quite a bit to read um, this week as far as um, Brit Kadashah scripture readings. And so we're going to get started. The first one is Matthew chapter 15, verses 1 to 20. Religious leaders quiz Yeshua, then some Pharisees and Torah scholars came to Yeshua from Jerusalem. They said, why do your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they do not do the ritual hand washing when they eat bread. And answering, he said to them, why do you also transgress the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? For God said, honor your father and mother. And he who speaks evil of 
father or mother must be put to death. But you say, whoever tells his father or mother, whatever you might have gained from me is a gift of God. He need not honor his father on account of your tradition. You may void the word of God, hypocrites. Rightly did Isaiah prophesy about you saying, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain, they worship me, teaching as doctrines, the commandments of men. Then Yeshua called the crowd and said to them, hear and understand, it's not what goes into the mouth that makes the man unholy, but what comes out of the mouth that this makes the man unholy. Then the disciples came and said to, the, said to him, do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard this saying? But he replied, every plant that my heavenly father has not planted will be uprooted. Leave them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if a blind man leads a blind man, both will fall into a pit. Then Peter answered and said to him, explain this parable to us. Are you also still lacking understanding, Yeshua said? Don't you grasp that whatever goes into the mouth passes into the stomach and then is ejected into the sewer? But the things that proceed out of the mouth some forth from the heart, and those things make the man unholy. For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, and slander. These are the things that make the man unholy, but to eat with unwashed hands does not make the man unholy. So he's making that distinguish. He was making that distinguishment be, between what uh, the Pharisees were saying and, and, and what was God's word. So Luke chapter 17 verses 1 to 10 is our next segment uh, back to teaching his own then yeshua said to his disciples stumbling blocks are bound to come but woe to the one by whom they come it would be better for him to have a millstone put around his neck and to be hurled into the sea than for him to cause one of these little ones to stumble and he's referring to the children keep yourselves alert if your brother sins rebuke him and if he repents forgive him even if he sins against you seven times a day and seven times returns to you saying i repent you shall forgive him then the emissary said to the lord increase our faith then the lord said if you have faith like a mustard seed you could say to this mulberry tree be uprooted and planted in the sea and and it would obey you but if you have a slave who is plowing or tending sheep who among you will say to him when he comes in from the field, come right in and recline at, at the table, but won't he instead say to him, prepare something for me to eat, dress yourself and wait on me while I eat and drink, and afterward you may eat and drink. He doesn't thank the slave because he did what he was commanded, does he? So you too, when you've done everything you are commanded, say, we are un unworthy slaves. We have done only what we were supposed to do. I also want to address that uh, the stumbling block to you. Um, we are like we are to be like children when we enter enter heaven, and we are children of God. So if anything anybody puts a stumbling block to any child of God, um, that that also refers to that as well. May it be like a millstone around their neck. Next, we have Romans chapter 3, verses 1 to 31. No one is acceptable. Then what is the advantage of being Jewish? Or what is the benefit of, of circumcision? Much in every way. First of all, they were entrusted with the sayings of God. So what if some did not trust? Will their lack of faith? nullify God's faithfulness, may it never be. Let God be true, even if every man is a liar, as it is written, that you may be righteous in your words and prevail when you are judged. But if our unrighteousness demonstrates the righteousness of God, what shall we say? God is not unrighteous to inflict wrath, is he? I am speaking in human terms. May it never be. 
for otherwise, how will God judge the world? But if by my lie, the truth of God abounds to his glory, why am I judged as a sinner? And why not say, let us do evil so that good may come, just as we are being slandered and as some claim that we say, their condemnation is deserved. What then? Are we better than they? No, not at all. For we have already made the case that all, both Jewish and Greek, that will be Jewish and, and, and non-Jewish people, are under sin. As it is written, there is no one righteous. No, not one. There is no one who understands. No one who seeks after God. All have turned aside together. They have become worthless. There is no one who does good. No, not even one. Their throat is an open grave. With their tongues, they keep deceiving. The poison of vipers is under their lips. Their mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and misery are in their paths and the way of shalom. They have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now, now we know that whatever the Torah says, it, it says to those within the Torah, so that every mouth may be shut and the whole world may become accountable to God. For no human on the basis of Torah observances will, will be set right in his sight. For through the Torah comes awareness of sin. It, was the, it, it actually helped people to understand what sin was and is today. And um, yeah, there's a lot of people still doing these same things. Um, how God accepts us. But now God's righteousness apart from the Torah has been revealed to which the Torah and the prophets bear witness. Namely, the righteousness of God through putting trust in Messiah Yeshua to all who keep on trusting for there is no distinction for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are set right as a gift of his grace through the redemption that is in Messiah Yeshua. God set forth Yeshua as atonement. Remember, we were talking about atonement. Through faith in his blood to show his righteousness in passing over sins already committed. Through God's forbearance he demonstrates his righteousness at the present time that he himself is just and also the justifier of the one who puts his trust in Yeshua where then is boasting it is excluded by what principle of works no but by the principle of faith and you're never going to get there on your own merit into heaven so there's no boasting about you know in heaven about you know, you're better than somebody else. Absolutely not. For all have fallen short of the glory of God. But we consider a person to be set right apart from Torah observance. Is God the God of the Jewish people only? Is he not only, is he not also the God of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also, since God is one, he will set right the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through faith. Do we then nullify the Torah through faithfulness? May it never be. So no, we do not nullify the Torah for those that think that they throw out the old. Do we then nullify the Torah? And this is in Romans in the New Testament. Through faithfulness, may it never be. On the contrary, we uphold the Torah. And next we have Romans. Chapter 9, verses 1 through chapter 10, verse 21. The role of Israel. I tell the truth in Messiah. I do not lie. My conscience assuring me in the Ruach, Hakadash, the Holy Spirit. My sorrow is great in the anguish in my heart unending. For I would pray that I myself were cursed, banished from Messiah for the sake of my people, my own flesh and blood, who are Israelites, to them being to them belong the adoption and the glory and the covenant, the covenants and the giving of the Torah and the temple service and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs and from them, according to the flesh, the Messiah, who is over all God blessed forever. Amen. But it is not as though the word of God 
has failed, for not all those who are descended from Israel are Israel, nor are, are they all children because they are Abraham's seed. Rather, your seed shall be called through Isaac. That is, it is not the children of the flesh who are children of God. Rather, the children of the promise are counted as seed. Okay, those who are born again. The promised seed is Yeshua. So if you're born again through Yeshua, you are saved and born again. This is speaking of you. You are children of the promise. Our children of God. For the word of promise is this. At this time, I will come and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but also Rebecca having twins from one act with our father Isaac. Yet before the sons were even born and had not done anything good or bad so that God's purpose and choice might stand, not because of works, but because of him who calls, it was said to her, the older shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob, I love, but Esau, I hated. What shall we say then? There is no injustice with God, is there? May it never be. For to Moses he said, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. So then it does not depend on the one who wills or the one who strives, but on God who shows mercy. The scripture says to Pharaoh, for this very purpose, I raised you up to demonstrate my power in you, so my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. So then he has mercy on whom he wills, and he hardens whom he wills. So he hardened, remember, he hardened Pharaoh's heart for a purpose. He will say to me then, why does he still find fault? For who has resisted his will? But who in the world are you, O man, who talks back to God? Will what is formed say to the one who formed it? Why did you make me like this? Does the potter have no right over the clay to make from the same lump one vessel for honor and another for common use? Now what if God, willing to demonstrate his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much patience vessels of wrath designed for destruction? And what if he did so to make known the riches of his glory on vessels of mercy, which he prepared beforehand for glory? Even us he called, not only from the Jewish people, but also from the Gentiles, as he sa says also in Hosea. I will call those who were not my people my people. Okay, this is where things have been opened up to non-Jewish people who, who believe. Uh, and her who is not loved, beloved. And it shall be in the place where it was said to them, you are not my people. There they shall be called sons of the living God. Isaiah cries out concerning Israel. Though the number of Benaiah Israel be as the sand of the sea, only the remnant shall be saved. For Adonai will carry out his word upon the earth, bringing it to an end and finishing quickly. And just as Isaiah foretold, unless Adonai Sabaoth had left us seed, we would have become like Sodom and Gomorrah, Sodom and resembled Gomorrah. What shall we say then? That Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness attained righteousness? That is a righteousness of faith. But Israel, who pursued a Torah of righteousness, did not reach the Torah. Why? Because they pursued it not by faith, but as if it were from works. Okay, so that's the difference. We need to look at Torah with faith. They stumbled over the stone of stumbling, just as it is written. Behold, I lay in Zion a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, and whoever believes in him shall not be put to shame. And that that stone of stumbling they're referring to is Yeshua. They just didn't get it. A lot of them didn't get it. The Torah scholars, um, the, Fer the Sanhedrin, did not get it at all. Misdirected zeal, brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and my prayer to God for Israel is for their salvation. Yes, absolutely. For all of Israel. For I testify about them that they have zeal for God, but not based on knowledge for being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own. They did not submit themselves to the righteousness of God. For Messiah is the goal of the Torah, 
as a means to righteousness for everyone who keeps trusting. For Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on Torah. The man who does these things shall live by them. But the righteousness based on faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart who will go up into heaven, that is to bring Messiah down, or who will go down into the abyss, that is to bring Messiah up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the words of faith that we are proclaiming. For if you confess with your mouth that Yeshua is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Okay, and we're getting ahead of ourselves here with that with that reading because we we are going to talk about salvation uh, in the altar call very shortly. So this is a nice segue. For with the heart it is believed for righteousness, and with the mouth it is confessed for salvation. So you're confessing Yeshua is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen? Amen. But the scripture says, whoever trusts in him will not be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. Jew and, oh, that would be Jew and Gentile, Jew and, or non-Jew. For the same Lord is Lord of all, richly generous, to all who call on him. For everyone who calls upon the name of Adonai shall be saved. How then shall they call on the one in whom they have not trusted? And how shall they trust in the one that they have not heard of? And how shall they hear without someone proclaiming? And how shall they proclaim unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who proclaim good news of good things. But not all heeded the good news, for Isaiah says, Adonai, who has believed our report. So faith comes from hearing, and hearing by the word of Messiah. But I say, have they never heard? Indeed they have. For their voice has gone out into all the earth, and the words to the ends of the and, and their words to the ends of the world. But I say, did Israel not understand? First Moses says, I will provoke you to jealousy by those who are not a nation. Okay? That's the Gentiles, that's the non-Jews, with a nation empty of understanding. I will vex you. And Isaiah is so bold to say, I was found by those who did not seek me. I became viable to those who did not ask for me. But about Israel, he says, all day long, I stretched forth my hands to a disobedient and contrary people. So this is what you know Yeshua did come for the house of Israel. But um again, you know, they will call him everyone will call him King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And we need to pray pray that all come to accept Yeshua. Pray for those that have not, that are struggling, that they realize that this is their Messiah. This is everyone's Messiah. And if they start reading, and, and, and it does happen when a lot start reading the New Testament, the New Covenant, the Brit Kadesha, they realize who Yeshua really is and that Yeshua is their Messiah and that the New Covenant is very Jewish. Uh, there's only one writer, and that is Luke. Uh, that is a, a non-Jew of, of the New Covenant. And he wrote, uh, of course, the book of Luke. He was a, he was a Greek physician, uh, wrote the book of Luke and the book of Acts. It, it's felt that he wrote that one too. So now we're going to go to Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 to 29. By deeds or by faith, O foolish Galatians who cast a spell on you before you, before your eyes, Yeshua, the Messiah, was clearly portrayed as crucified. I want to find out just one thing from you. Did you receive the Ruach by deeds, based on Torah, or by hearing, based on trust? Are you so foolish? After beginning with the Ruach, will you now reach the, the goal in the flesh? No. Did you endure so much for nothing? If it really was for nothing. So then the one who gives you the Ruach and works miracles among you, does he do? Does he do it because of your deeds? Based on Torah or 
your hearing based on trust and faithfulness. Just as Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness, know then that those who have faith are children of Abraham. The scriptures foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith proclaimed the good news to Abraham in advance, saying, All the nations shall be blessed through you, so that the faithful are blessed along with Abraham, the faithful one. For all who rely on the deeds of Torah are, are under a curse, for the scripture says, Cursed is everyone who does not keep doing everything written in the scroll of the Torah. Okay. This is not to discount that we are to throw out Torah, because we're not to throw out Torah, but we're not. We're, we, we are saved by faith. But that's not to say disregard the Torah, but, but, but it's, it's a distinction between those that think that they are going to get to heaven by their works and deeds through Torah and not by faith. So that's, that, that is a clear distinction. And if you um, go back to what I had just previously read of the difference, you know, of, of uh, faith and works. So this was in um, Romans chapter 9. What shall we say then that Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness attain righteousness? That is a righteousness of faith. Okay. Because they believed and, and, and it was through faith. Then that's the Gentiles. But Israel who pursued a Torah of righteousness did not reach the Torah. Why? Because they pursued Torah not by faith, but as if it were from works. It's the faith that makes the difference. It's not saying throw out Torah. It's saying that they were pursuing with a righteousness by works. And there's not enough works that you, as a human being born in sinful flesh, will ever do. But that doesn't say throw out Torah. And that's where people get this all confused. And I just want to uh, I'm, I just want to address that because that is very important. You know, we don't throw out Torah, but we look at it. We, we look at it through the eyes of faith. If you read the Torah, like I had mentioned before, a lot of it is a moral compass for how to live morally. I mean, why would you want to throw out morality and become immoral? But the Torah was the school school master until that relationship could be re-established you know and and if you go back to what happened on mount sinai this is the, the lord wanted to re-establish a relationship with the people but instead they got torah because they were they didn't they didn't want to hear god speak to them because they were frightened and they said, uh, Moses, you go ahead and have the relationship. We'll do whatever he tells us to do. And that is exactly what happened. But God would have instructed them how to live morally and given them some of those things as well. Uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a difference there. And like Yeshua said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Well, what are those commandments? When he said, I didn't come to abolish the law. And actually he would take, you know, like he took the, he took the, you know, the, the murdering piece, thou shall not kill. If you even are angry at someone, it's like you killed, you already killed them. Um, so he made it actually tougher even. Um, so it's, it, you really need to look at this and, and, and read, uh, read the Bible word for word and actually, and even Paul wrote in Romans chapter 3, verse 31, do we then nullify the Torah through faithfulness? May it never be. On the contrary, we uphold the Torah. Okay, getting back to um, what I was just reading, the deeds or faith. So here he addresses it. It is clear that no one is set right be before God by Torah for the righteous shall live by Ebmuna, and that is faith. So, and that is exactly what he was saying. They were approaching Torah by works and not by faith. Uh, however, Torah is not based on trust and faithfulness. On the contrary, the one who does these things shall live by them. Messiah liberated us from the, the Torah's curse, having become a curse for us. 
it is written curses everyone who hangs on on a tree in order that through messiah yeshua the blessing of abraham might come to the gentiles so we might receive the promise of the ruach through trusting faith so so the curses that were you know the 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 sins that are addressed there uh, the, the numerous sins that is you know that that is what yeshua died for absolutely and he liberated us from from the consequences of that slaves or sons brothers and sisters i speak in human terms even with a man's covenant once it has been confirmed no one canceled it cancels it or adds to it now the promises were spoken to abraham and to a seed it doesn't say and to seeds as of many but as of one and to your seed who is the messiah what i am saying is this torah which came 430 years later does not cancel the covenant previously confirmed by god so as to make the promise ineffective for if the inheritance is based on law it is no longer based on a promise but god has graciously give graciously given it to abraham by means of a promise then why the torah it was added because of wrongdoings until the seed would come to whom the promise had been made okay it was arranged through angels by the hand of an intermediator and now an intermediator uh, is not for one party alone but god is one then it is torah against the promises of god may it never be for if a law has been given that could impart life, certainly righteousness would have been based on law. But the scripture has locked up the whole world under sin so that the promise based on trust in Messiah Yeshua might be given to those who trust. Now, before faith came, we were being guarded under Torah, bound together until the coming faith would be revealed. Therefore, the Torah became our guardian to lead us or in some some Bibles will say the schoolmaster to lead us to Messiah so that we might be made right based on trusting, on trusting Yeshua, you know, the Messiah and what he's saying. But now that faith has come, we're no longer under a guardian, for you are all sons to God through trusting in Messiah Yeshua. For all of you who are immersed in Messiah have clothed yourself with Messiah. Therefore, there there is neither Jew nor Greek, and 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 they're saying Greek as as non-Jew because you know that was basically the people of the time of the time. You know they were Jew, Roman, Greek, and he was dealing you know with the Greek population at that time. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Messiah Yeshua. And if you belong to Messiah then you're, you're, you are Abraham's seed, heir according to the promise. So once you're born again, you're all part of that. You're adopted, well, of course, adopted in, and you're part of one big family. I know that can get confusing, and people will just, you know, they'll just look at one statement and then think, well, pff, we just throw out the whole Old Testament. And and there are people that just hang on to just the New Testament, and and uh, you're missing a whole bunch of things and prophecy is still in the old testament too uh, it's a very dangerous place to tread so yeah take the word and right rightly divide it and look at everything you can see what paul said you know no we don't throw out torah may it never be he said and i'm just paraphrasing at that point but uh anyway we're gonna read the last um Scripture reading for today um, out of the Brit Kedeshah, Messiah enters the heaven, heavenly holies. Now, even the first one had regulations for worship and the earthly sanctuary. For a tent was prepared in the outer part were the menorah, the table, and the presentation of the bread, and this is called the holy place. Beyond the second curtain was a dwelling called the holy of hope the Holy of Holies. It held a golden altar of incense and the Ark of the Covenant completely covered with gold. In the Ark was a golden jar holding the manna, Aaron's rod, it, rod that had budded, and the tablets of the covenant. And above it, cherubim 
of Uguri overshadowing the mercy seat, but it is not now possible to speak in detail about these things. Now, with these things prepared this way, the Kohanim do continually enter into the outer tent while completing the services, but in, into the inner once a year. And we're talking again about Yom Kippur. So that that has been a shadow, you know, we're, we're actually paralleling what was in uh, the Torah. The Kohen Gadol alone, and not without blood, which he offers for himself and for the unintentional sin, sins of the people. By this, the Ruach HaKadosh makes clear that the way into the holies has not yet been revealed, while the first tent is still standing. It is a symbol for the present time. Accordingly, gifts and sacrifices are being offered that cannot make the worshiper perfect with respect to conscience. These relate only to food and drink and various washings, regulations for the body imposed until a time of setting things straight. But when Messiah appeared as Kohen Gadol of the good things that have now come, passing through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this creation, he entered into the holy, holies once and for all, not by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, having obtained eternal redemption for the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling those who have been defiled, sanctified for the cleansing of the flesh, how much more with the blood of Messiah, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, cleansed out conscience from dead works to serve the living God. So, you know, the, the animal sacrifices were, were a type of shadow of what was to come, and Yeshua was the ultimate sacrifice that uh, took away everything, and he could enter the Holy of Holies through his own blood. For this reason, he is the mediator of a new covenant in order that those called may receive the promised external inheritance since a death has taken place that redeems them from violations under the first covenant. For where there is a covenant, the death of the one who made it must be established. Our covenant is secured upon the basis of dead bodies since it had no strength as long as the one who made it lives. That is why not even the first covenant was inaugurated without blood. For when every commandment has been spoken by Moses to all the people according to the Torah, he took the blood of the calves and goats with, with water and scarlet wool and hyssop, and he sprinkled both the book itself and all the people. He said, this is the blood of the covenant which God commanded you. And in this same way, he sprinkled the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry with the blood. And nearly everything was purified, purified in blood, according to the Torah, and set apart from the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Therefore, it was necessary for the replicas of these heavenly things to be purified with these sacrifices, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Messiah did not enter into holies made with hands, counterparts of the true things, but into heaven itself, now to appear in God's presence on our behalf. And he did not offer himself again and again as the Kohen Gadol enters into the Holy of Holies year after year with blood that is not his own. Yeah, he, it was a once and done deal. For then he would have needed to suffer again and again from the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has been revealed once and for all at the close of the ages to be to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for men to die once, and after this, judgment. So also Messiah was offered once to bear the sins of many. He will appear a second time apart from sin to those eagerly awaiting him for salvation. And yes, we do know that he will be returning again to rule and reign also. And that's the end of the Brit Kadashal readings. As we mentioned before, um, uh, the the parasha, the Torah portion, began um, talking about 
Abihu and Nadab's death and and how um, Aaron was to enter the Holy of Holies. Then it went into Yom Kippur, uh, talked about, um, you know, the blood atonement, also the scapegoat, um, which ended up, you know, Yeshua did that for us. He took all, all of, all of the sins were put on him. Uh, as well, um, but once a year, um, this the high priest went into the holy of holies um, for the people uh, for their sins. And yes, there was animal sacrifices um, to cover the sin, but it never took it away until Yeshua Himself um, did that for us. He died for us. And also in the Torah, there was the, the laws against uh, eating blood because, the, you know, the, the life of the flesh is in the blood of all living creatures. So, um, and the blood of atonement was given for us, which was Yeshua. Now, the half Torah, um, we went through um, Ezekiel and we went through Amos, you know, it addressed, well, they, they also, the moral issues um, were also addressed in the Torah. And, and of course, as you fast forwarded into uh, where the prophets were, the, the people were being uh, told, you know, prophesied that, you know, you, you actually uh, broke the, the laws that I had, given to you the the statutes that i've given to you um and you're doing these very things that you know i told you to stay away from that the nations were doing so you know i will scatter you among the nations and disperse you uh, through the, those countries and consume and and consume the uncleanness out of you and so um this is what, uh, and the purpose of the diaspora is to consume the uncleanness out of, out of the people and therefore uh, restore. And, you know, that was also mentioned of, you know, restoration as well. Brit Kadashah, we had numerous passages. And, and really, we need to focus on the fact that Mashiach, Yeshua, appears as our high priest, our token Gadol, of the true tabernacle of which the earthly tabernacle was merely a shadow and therefore his own blood to secure eternal redemption for those who are trusting in him by faith okay, this is where we have faith and works that doesn't but that doesn't mean go <laughs> do horrible things and don't you know go steal go do immoral things um no um in, in fact you know again yeshua said if you love me you will obey my commandments Yeshua died on a cross, shed his own blood um, to, to pay for the penalties of sin that were committed under the Torah of Moses. In the first covenant, the Torah of, Mo, the Torah, uh, of Moses, innocent sacrificial victims had to be killed in order to benefit from their death. That is the most evident in Yom Kippur ceremony the sins of the nations were covered by the blood of bull, bulls and goats for the previous year's sins. And imagine this, they could have just walked away and had had some, uh, you know, had an argument with somebody and boy, they've got sin to carry for the whole year. Not a good thing. <laughs> but this ritual, like the others instituted in the earthly tabernacle, foreshadowed um, the coming substance that was prophesied. So testament, a testament is not a force until the testator is, is dead. That is, a will comes into effect only after someone dies. The new covenant of Almighty God was put into effect when Yeshua the Mashiach was sacrificed and died. And the heirs to this will receive eternal forgiveness for their sins, unlike the contingent forgiveness obtained by the rituals, and that was the, the animal sacrifices offered in the earthly pattern of the of the Holy, holy place. So, um, yeah, um, 
Yeshua took it all away. And again, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So this is why Yeshua had to do what he did. And if you look at um, some of the penalties, you know, the wages of sin are death. And we're going to get into the altar call very shortly. Um, and um, so this is why uh, God allowed that substitution and, you know, to cover sin with the animal sacrifices. But um, under the new covenant, because of what Yeshua did, the sins are taken away entirely. There is no more need for continual sacrifices since Yeshua provided this once and for all sacrifice for all of our sins. And again, he is our King of Kings, our Lord of Lords, our High Priest. He could enter the Holy of Holies because through his own blood. Father God, we thank you. Uh, we thank you for this powerful message. We thank you for Yeshua. Yeshua, we thank you for everything that you have done for us. Absolutely. We could not have done this on our own. We could not have, and there would have, there would still be to this day sacrifices of animals and um, ongoing and ongoing, and um, there is no need for that since you have done it all once and for all, and we thank you for that. We thank you, we worship you, we adore you. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, Amen and Amen. I'm talking about Yeshua. Um, talking about Yeshua here, and Yeshua was the Lamb of God to take away the sins of the world, as we know. And for those of us that are saved, you know, we need to turn to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Or we can actually do 8 to 10. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. So it's nothing that you could ever do to save yourself. It is the gift of God. It is not based on deeds so that no one may boast for we are his workmanship created in Messiah Yeshua for good deeds which God prepared beforehand so we might walk in them. So that's where we need to tease that out and separate that. That is not to say, like I said, to throw the baby out with the bathwater. We don't disregard the Old Testament um, because actually it's repeated. A lot of those things uh, that are listed are repeated in the New Testament. It's just we don't stone people. We don't, uh, you know, it's, there's, there was a lot of laws. Um, and some of them, you know, some things, you know, Yeshua was actually calling out um, the Pharisees too because uh, he knew that they were putting even more to it uh, than what was given also through Moses even. Um, so he was calling them out and, and, and you know, actually called them hypocrites and, um, and, and actually straightened them out on what God's word was as, as we read that. Uh, one pa passage you say this is the way it's to be God says this is because um, of course you know Yeshua was the word became flesh so he knew the word inside and out so um, with that being said we are going to go into the altar call and I think that uh, it's a good segue into there uh, into that salvation can only be achieved through Yeshua through the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, it is salvation is deliverance from sin and their consequences, as we've been talking about. Jesus came here with a specific purpose the first time to die for our sins because he was the perfect, he was the perfect lamb of God to take away the sin of the world. And that is how he, the, the role that he actually portrayed when he died on the cross. He came here with no sin and never sin. Spotless, blameless, and he took all of our sins 
on him and and our illnesses when he laid down his life on the cross so that the world could be redeemed of sin forever as you as we've been reading there was a sacrificial system that was put in place um to just cover sin but again imagine imagine once a year all those all those bulls all those goats all those sheep uh, you know all those animals losing their life because they were the substitute for the people that had sinned and all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So, you know, when you're talking about, you know, a large number of people and, and having their sins covered, well, that's a lot. Romans chapter three, verse 23 says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans chapter five, verse eight says, but God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Yeshua died for us. Once and for all, that was the ultimate sacrifice. There needs to be no more for, for, for sin. Now, I have to caution because then people get into this hyper grace mode that, oh, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm saved. I, I'm saved. I, you know, I've given my life to the Lord. I'm, I'm saved. My sins are forgiven. And then they go out and do the very same things. No, that is not the attitude that you need to take. You need to come. Um, you, you you need to come and confess your sins. Yes, you know, and you, you Yeshua, Yeshua died for those sins, but that's not what the intention of wiping your slate clean and deliberately going out and doing the same things. Now, can you slip? Of course, you're human, and and you know, the Lord knows that. You just need you need to be sure that you know you, that you need to repent of those sins the idea of repentance means you're turning away from sin you're turning away from that and, and and trying to live a more righteous life first john chapter 1 verse 9 says if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness you know, Yeshua knows, he, he knows what, you know, he, he was tempted as well. Um, and so he knows he lived in a fleshly body as well. It's just, he didn't sin. He wasn't born into sin. He wasn't born out of the line of Adam. We are, um, which makes the big difference. He was born of a virgin and he was, um, God breathed breathed his spirit into that virgin girl, Mary, Miriam. So um, there's a big difference there. So we're born into this, this fleshly body through the Adamic line. And yes, we're automatically born into sin. So, so that's why there, everybody needs everybody needs a savior, and that savior is Yeshua. That makes sense. So you can't get to heaven on your own works. That was addressed. And I just read Ephesians chapter two, verses eight to ten, which tells you it is the gift of God, and it's by faith that you have been saved through the grace of through the grace of Yeshua, who died for everyone. Now, I don't know if you have not been saved, if you have not been born again. Um, if you look at the world that we live in today, it is not in good shape. What is good is being called evil. What is evil is being called good. And everything is totally upside down. If you're walking in the world without Jesus, without Yeshua, you are lost. And you can't get to heaven on your own. You can't get to heaven by uh, multiple ways. The world will tell you that, yes, there's many paths to heaven. That is not true. Not one iota of truth in that. That's another twist the devil likes to, to, to throw in there. There's one way. The path is narrow, very narrow. And Yeshua said that himself. And there's only one way. And 
and his name is Yeshua. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one will come to the Father except by me. Period. The end. There's no, there's no rationalizing this. And, you know, the world will come up with all kinds of ideas, fanciful ideas, you know, and people need to not listen to those fanciful ideas. Those are fables. Those are, you know, don't, don't have your ears, your, you know, your itching ears tickled um, by this nonsense. Because it's not true. The broad path will lead to death and destruction. And Yeshua has said that. You must be born again, born of spirit and water. And that is what Yeshua told Nicodemus, the Pharisee. He said, flesh is flesh and spirit is spirit. We are born again of the spirit, not through the flesh. But because of what Yeshua did. So if you would like to be born again and saved, you can say this simple prayer with me right now. Dear God, I come to you today to confess that I'm a sinner. And I, I understand now that I need a Savior. And I've, I understand that Savior, the Messiah, is Yeshua. And I thank you, Yeshua, for everything that you've done. Because I couldn't have done that on my own. I couldn't have paid my sin debt in full. Not in that manner. And you did it for me. And I thank you. I believe that you came here to do that. I believe you came and you died on a cross. You were buried and you were resurrected and are sitting at the right hand of the Father now. I believe you're coming again to roll and reign. And I thank you for giving me this opportunity to be saved, to be born again, to become a child of God. I accept. I accept that. And I thank you for the gift of eternal life. I declare you as my Lord and Savior. I declare you as the King of Kings. I declare you as the Messiah. I believe. I believe with all my heart. And I'm asking you to come live inside of my heart. And please send your Holy Spirit to live inside me, to guide me and direct me and teach me your ways for the rest of my life and help me to live a more righteous life pleasing to you and i believe through you and you alone yeshua that i am saved i am healed by your stripes i am delivered born again and set free from sin and the consequences of sin and i believe through you and you alone yeshua i'm healed and healthy of mind body and soul in yeshua jesus precious most powerful name amen and amen and if you said this prayer with me welcome to the family of god I am going to encourage you to get into a Bible-based church or Messianic congregation, one that teaches directly from the Word of God, and one that breaks down the Word of God and doesn't just take a little segment and then just toss everything else out. And that's what tends to happen. We need to look at the whole picture. And we need to read the Bible also to know that what you're being preached is actually accurate. So you can look at it yourself. You know, 2 Timothy says, uh, 2 Timothy um, chapter 3, verse 10 says, All scripture is inspired by God and useful for teaching, for reproof, for restoration, and for training in righteousness, so that the person belonging to God may be capable fully equipped for every good deed. So you can go into Bible Hub, Bible Gateway. You can select a version. I am. I do not tell you you have to get a specific version of the Bible. I know there's people that will do that. And, um, and um, you know, there's, there's people that will be King James only. Uh, they'll be... Revised standard only. You'll have people that are NASB only. Or um, I say go to, I, I, we want you to read the Bible first and foremost. And if you're not comfortable with a version of the Bible, then it, it may not be for you um, at, at the moment. I mean, and as you grow into it, then you may want to pick up other versions of the Bible. I think it's really 
I, I liked, but I, <laughs> then again, I'm a connoisseur of the word of God. I, I have several versions of the Bible and I like to open them all up, you know, and look, you know, if I'm reading or studying a specific area of the bible i may look and 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 see what the english standard version says see what the nasb see what the king james says see what the see what the tlv says uh, for clarification too sometimes it's really good to do that um so i'm not going to tell you you must get this version of the bible uh no i'm going to tell you to go to bible gateway or bible hub and sample a, a version of the bible and as you sample it, look at the different versions and see which one uh, really fits you, that you would be willing to sit down and read it. Because that's the most important thing. I mean, if you purchase something and it's like, well, I can't get into this because I can't understand what, what they're saying or you, you know what I mean? Because um, there's some versions of the Bible, like, like I'm, I will, I'm not picking on the King James version of the Bible because the King James version of the Bible, I do use it. It is a very good version of the Bible, um, but it can be very difficult. The old English style writing is, is in that. Um, but but if you read the New King James Version, that is taken out. Those those types of words, you know, we don't talk in Old English style writing. It's kind of like the Shakespearean style writing. So uh, and that can be very confusing to many people. So, but it is a very good solid uh, version of the Bible, certainly. So I won't discount it either. Uh, but I'm saying if you're having difficulty with that, um, it is best for you to get a, a version of the Bible that you're comfortable with and that you would be willing to commit to read because that's what we really want you to do, um, to really get into the Bible and um, involve yourself in, in, in Bible study um, with the local church or Messianic congregation that you may join. Um, so you have that ongoing dialogue as you're as you're going through Bible study, and most churches or or or, or a Messianic congregations do have them. So ask about that at, when when you join. Um, we have one; it's online um, as well, as you heard in our announcements, and that's an ongoing thing. And and we really need to be doing that. We need to know the Word of God. So, and, and by learning the word of God, you get to know the heart of your father as well, which is very important. So you want to definitely develop that relationship. He doesn't care about religion. And that goes along with, you know, uh, the works, the deeds and the faith and all that stuff. He wants a relationship. And that's what uh, it goes back to, you know, Adam and Eve had a relationship with God and they walked with him in the cool of the evening and communed with him on, on a regular daily basis. And that was all lost. So he tried to establish that at Mount Sinai. That didn't exactly happen in, in the way that he had wanted it to. He, he had a relationship definitely with Moses, but, um, and with, with other people that were willing to hear him. Like David was one that related to God. Um, from the time he was young. And of course, all the prophets heard from God. So there were individuals throughout the history that actually had a true relationship with God and heard his voice. And then we, then, then we come to Yeshua, um, where Yeshua was establishing that again, that we could have relationship, not religion, like I said, God doesn't care if you're Methodist, if you're Presbyterian, if you're Lutheran, if you're Catholic, if you're, he doesn't really care about that. And it really isn't important because in this, in the end, um, there's not going to be denominations in heaven. That's just more division. And I see time and time again, I see all this division that goes on among brothers and sisters in the Lord. I mean, they argue do doctrine. They argue everything. And it's like, stop. You're just causing more division. And then there are people that may want to come to the Lord, and they're just seeing people arguing back and forth of 
of uh, doctrinal things that really, some of it is really silly. When we need to really be, be about the Father's business and sharing the good news of the, uh, of, of the, the gospel of Jesus Christ, of Yeshua, of Mashiach. There is so many people out there that have not been saved. There are people that have fallen away because of, of the divisional stuff. And we need to come together as a body of Messiah. The body needs to work together and not against each other. And that is how we become very effective. And there's there's a whole bunch of people out there. The harvest is ripe, but there's very few workers. Too many people are out there arguing doctrine and not sharing Jesus, Yeshua, with everyone that you have the opportunity to. So we need to get serious and about the Father's business. Time is short. Time is short. So I'm going to bring uh, Shabbat to a close as Shabbat draws to an end. And, and the aroma of sweet spices lingers. The flames are extinguished until next week. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord and I is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who creates the various spices. And blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who creates the lights of fire. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who distinguishes between holy and secular. And in Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 to 27, we have the Aaronic blessing. The Lord spoke to Moses, telling Moses to speak to Aaron and his sons to, to gather the children of Israel. He wanted to bless them he, and, and put his name on them. So he gave specific words to bless them. When you are born again into the family of God, this blessing is also for you. And I'm going to say it first in Hebrew, and then I will say it in English. Ivarekaka Adonai the Ishmareka, Yae Adonai Kanabaleka vi Kunaka, Isa Adonai Kanabaleka, Vea Samleka Shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. Shabua Tov, everyone. Have a good week. God bless each and every one of you and hope to see you. Um, at Rosh, you know, either Rosh Kadesh IR um, or the live, come, come join us on Tuesday evening. We'd love to have you. God bless.